Chinese communist leaders are constantly embroiled in political infighting. Their biggest enemy has always been from within. Who is Xi Jinping's number one foe? And how did Obama once save him from a coup attempt that nearly cost his chairmanship? Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. In my last video, I talked about why Xi has been changing bodyguards and how some of the public security officials he took down have attempted a coup. But those low-level officials couldn't have acted alone. Who is behind them? Everything seems to point to one person, Xi's biggest enemy from within the CCP. Like Xi Jinping, Zhen Qinghong is the second generation of communist leaders and an important member of the CCP princelings. His father was the Minister of Internal Affairs. Although his father's rank wasn't very high, his mother was very influential. She was head of a CCP nursery school and took care of more than 100 children of senior CCP leaders. Many of these children are now in key positions within the party. Even though Zhen doesn't hold any formal position now, he is still very powerful through his relatives and circle of friends. His eldest brother, formerly a special inspector of the Ministry of Culture, is very influential in the entertainment industry and in Hong Kong. And another brother was the head of the scientific research department of the Academy of Military Sciences. There is also a brother who was the political commissar of the Air Force Logistics Department. His sister served as the political commissar of general staff management in the People's Liberation Army. Except for his eldest brother, all three other siblings hold the rank of major general. The animosity between Xi and Zheng started when their political interests clashed nine years ago, when Xi was about to become the fifth leader of the CCP. In 2012, Xi was heir apparent to Hu Jintao, but he wasn't Jiang Zemin's choice. A few months before Xi was to become CCP top leader at the end of 2012, Jiang's faction conspired to remove him and replace him with Bo Xilai, one of its key members. The coup conspiracy was exposed when Bo's public security chief Wang Lijun defected to the American consulate in Chengdu on February 6 that year. Wang brought with him documents and informed the Americans of the plan to replace Xi. American Ambassador Gary Locke informed Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and President Obama was also notified. While this happened, she wasn't aware of the coup d'etat. One week later, on February the 13th, he left on a trip to visit the United States, Ireland, and Turkey. On February 14th, she met Obama and Biden at the White House. They told she about the planned coup that Wang Lijun had disclosed. By the way, this has been reported by various media outlets, and Hillary Clinton also mentioned it in her 2014 memoir, Hard Choices. When she heard about the coup, he was very shocked. He had no idea. But he continued with his trip. On February 16th, when the nine-member Politburo Standing Committee voted to decide the future of Bo Xilai, four members of Jiang's faction and four members of Hu Jintao's faction were deadlocked. A phone call was placed to Xi for his vote. He sided with Hu Jintao and cast the key vote to bring down Bo Xilai. That was a major blow to the Jiang faction and started Xi Jinping's nine-year struggle with them, including his fight with Zhen Qinghong, who is the faction's number two guy. One month after she officially became the CCP leader in November 2012, he launched the anti-corruption campaign. He has since taken down nearly 400 minister or provincial officials at a speed of almost one every week. This includes key members of Zheng's interest groups, the Jiangxi Gang, the Hong Kong Gang, the Public Security Gang, and the Financial Predators. Some people say that Xi's anti-corruption campaign is politically motivated. That may be true, but the Jiang's faction is notoriously corrupt and deserved a cleanup. Jiang Zemin came to power a few years before China was accepted into the World Trade Organization. 
During his reign of 20 years, an enormous amount of capital poured into China. The key members of the Zhen faction personally benefited and amassed huge amounts of wealth. They also controlled major industries, finance, oil, energy, entertainment, media, and high tech, among others. Corruption started with them at the very top and quickly spread like an epidemic throughout Chinese society. Once people saw that having power equates to having access to wealth, anything was available for sale, from college exams to degrees, from government positions to military ranks. According to data from the CCP's Central Commission of Discipline Inspection from December 2012 to May 2021, 4 million party members have been investigated, and 3.7 million disciplinary and political sanctions have been issued. The authorities filed cases to investigate 20,000 bureau level, 170,000 county level, and 616,000 township level CCP officials. These individuals who have benefited through corruption during Zheng's era naturally belong to the Zheng's faction. They've been scheming to take revenge, and we keep hearing rumors about assassination and coup attempts. She has no choice but to fight back, and he's becoming ever more hardline in doing so. So now he's aiming at Zhen, and an ugly fight has broken out. She has been taking down Zhen's cronies in various sectors one after another. On June 29th this year, she ordered a death sentence for Liao Xiaoming, the former chairman of the Huarong Group. Lai was one of the important members of the Jiangxi Gang headed by Zhen, and Huarong was once one of the largest state-owned asset management companies. Lai was the first head of a financial firm to be executed. Xiao Jianhua, the head of the Tomorrow Group, was arrested at the end of January 2017 and has remained missing. Xiao was close to Zhen Qinghong and Zhou Yongkang and was reportedly a money man for the Jiang faction. Jack Ma's Alibaba, which has been in trouble since the end of last year, is accused of having close ties with Jiang's allies and Zhen. Evergrande's Xu Jiaying is also considered a money man for Zhen. The Sydney Morning Herald revealed that Xu and Zhen's son are neighbors in Sydney's most exclusive neighborhood, Point Piper. Movie star Zhao Wei, who was spotted holding the arm of Zhen's older brother in a photo, has been delisted from all entertainment platforms in China. Following Evergrande's footsteps, Fantasia, a real estate company owned by Zhen's niece, is now in financial trouble. Recently, the niece posted a picture of the movie Darkest Hours on social media. When Xi's opponents control these key industries and also control the public security forces, they're too powerful and threatening to him. Before the 20th National Congress next year, the two sides will engage in a last-ditch effort to eliminate each other. Maybe that's how they will bring down the CCP. These are indeed the darkest hours for both sides. What does this mean for us? My advice? Stay away. Any business with the CCP is dangerous business. It's like trying to deal with a group of gangsters who are constantly engaged in a life and death fight. Your chances of coming out of that fight alive are small. I made a couple of videos on the CCP's factional politics. You can watch them by clicking there. Um, someone asked me if I have a Patreon account to accept donations. I don't use Patreon. You can go to my website to make a donation. That's laysrealtalk.com, and I really appreciate that. I'll provide the link in the description below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.